All right, in addition to the polyhedra, the second type of solids that we are going to look in more detail at are solids of revolution. Okay, these can also be called solids of rotation. This means the same thing. It's kind of like building blocks in undefined terms. And just two different names for the same thing. Okay, but if you took a semicircle and you rotated it about its diameter, what shape, what solid shape are you going to get? So again, like this point would map back to here. And again, we could map these corresponding points as we spin it around. And what shape do we get? So this is a sphere. So a sphere can be defined as solid formed by rotating a semicircle about its diameter. Okay, we'll go through on the next slide um, another definition for this, but this would be one. This would be the definition with regard to its uh, rotation. Okay, the diameter on this case would be the axis of rotation. Hey, what if you took a right triangle and you rotated it about this axis? What shape would you get as you spin it around here? You get cone. Okay, so a cone is going to be the solid formed by rotating a right triangle. Again, it has to be a right triangle. About one of its legs. And the legs of a right triangle are just the, uh, the two sides that form, or one of the two sides that form the right angle. And then finally, if you take a rectangle and you rotate it about one of its sides, what solid shape is formed? So this is a cylinder. And this is formed uh, by taking or rotating a rectangle. about one of its sides. And so these are going to be the main three solids of rotation that we talk about. Now, uh, because they all have surface area and volume formulas that we'll deal with in chapter eight, okay, but solids of rotation don't have to fall just within these, and the solids don't even, or the poly, or the figures don't even have to rotate uh, about a part of themselves. It can rotate about an axis that isn't even touching it. So if you had an axis of symmetry in, let's say, a circle, and we took this circle and we rotated it about this axis of symmetry along three dimensions. So out in space, so it comes out, goes back in, all the way back behind. So you have this shape that winds up forming a Krispy Kreme, right? Okay. Probably the last thing you want to hear while you're all hungry and waiting for lunch to start, but that's kind of what it forms. Okay, so uh, when you're looking at solids of rotation, it doesn't have to just be these three things, sphere, cone, and cylinder. It can be other items uh, it can, um, that it can form as it spins around. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the kind of other definitions of these. So the other definitions, when you take that semicircle and rotate it to form a sphere, that's just the set of all points in space a given distance from a fixed point. Now, how does this definition differ from the definition of circle? By what word? What word would we have to change in this definition to make it the, the definition for circle? Okay. Good. So if we change that word space into a single plane, 
right, or a plane, then we'd have the definition for circle. And make sure you can make that distinction. That will be something that you'll see um, on assessments. Right? When you're looking at a cylinder, a cylinder is a solid that's bound by two parallel and congruent circular bases that are joined together by a curved rectangular lateral surface. So if you think about a soda can, so if you were to uh, cut off the top and the bottom of a soda can, split what remains in half, and then unroll it, what shape did you have? You just have a rectangle, right? So here would be that shape. And in fact, if you took this net or this, if you cut this shape out of a two dimension, a sheet of paper, or in the case of a soda can, like a, a tin or some metal can or metal uh, material, and you could roll this back onto and you could form your cylinder. And then finally a cone, the again the right triangle, uh, but the definition is just a solid with a circular base, every point of which is joined to a fixed point lying outside the plane of that base, and that fixed point is still called a vertex. And when you look at these, um, the sphere is kind of off on its own. It'll have its own surface area and, for, and volume formulas that you'll uh, be aware of. A cylinder is very similar to a prism. It has two parallel and congruent bases that are connected. The connection is the height of that solid. And often that'll just be the, if it's a right cylinder, the centers of the bases will line up, be perfectly um, matched to one another, perpendicular to one another, to give you the height of that cylinder. Okay, the cone is very similar to the pyramid in that it again has one single base. In a cone it's a circle, in a cylinder, or I'm sorry, in a pyramid it's a polygon, but it also is going to have a height. The perpendicular from the vertex to the base is the height of that cone. Okay, so now, if you're looking at uh, right versus oblique, and if you took like a stack of coins and you kind of slowly push them so that they leaned just a little bit, and so that by the time you get to a few, they're leaning off the side. So they have this stack of coins here that are leaning. This would be an example of an oblique cylinder. And we're not going to do too much work with non-right solids, but again I do want you to be able to picture or imagine what it might look like. If the centers of the circular bases are not lined up directly above each other, or in the case of a cone, if the vertex is not perpendicular to the center of that base, then you have an oblique solid as well. 